pretty much where the real magic happens. I mean, this is the, the place where if you if you mess up in here, the everything out there doesn't matter essentially. Um, so what we're doing here is we have master slants of all of our species, and we expand them out here to these T1 plates. And these T1 plates are which are what's going to be expanded even further in the grain. So these plates then go into these little bags. After about two weeks, they'll be fully colonized, and these will then go into a bunch of G2 bags here. So the G2 is what we're then expanding into our substrate. So those are those are extremely important that they're clean and that the process has been cleaned up until that point. It's one plate per bag. One, it's one plate per G1 bag, or or one plate actually makes four of the small G1 bags and two of the larger ones up there. So yeah, I mean, from one plate, your the potential is to grow a couple of thousand pounds. Generation one. Generation one. Yep, yep. Generation one. Yep, and then generation two is your G2. And uh, that's usually what you'll expand from. Now, a lot of people won't go any further than that because each time you expand, you're yes. just increasing your risk of contamination for sure. So you're an autoclave, you're sterilizing your face. Yeah, so we actually have used two small all American autoclaves, and we just got a new 150 liter one. Um, really enhanced our production. So thankful for it because. So is this something you made? Or is this no, so the, the HEPA filters we purchased online, so. Definitely a necessity if you're, you know, doing any kind of culture work or any kind of expansion work. Now you'll need this for inoculating your own substrate as well. Um, so all these are our HEPA filtration, you know, the 99.9% .9 clean air. You should be able to hold a plate in front of this and not get much of any, you know, contamination on there. Shouldn't get any, really. But. So yeah, so this is where Pretty much the bulk of the work happens, quote unquote. It doesn't feel like it, but how many species you know. you're working with? Now? So right now we're doing about um, twelve different species. Well, and we have a couple of different strains that we grow for species. Oysters, oysters, and lions are by far the biggest. Those are like the bread and butter, and that's what I would definitely prefer. Starting growers to be working with them, which is much. That's kind of what we do in the first three or four years and really, you know, that's what people want, and they're the easiest to grow by far. So, here we have our spawn production and our substrate production area. Yeah, that's the new. That's our new auto glaze. So. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, Make. I'm. So happy. <laughs> you don't think you get toys like that and be so happy, but. <laughs> yeah, so there's a specific process for prepping grain for spawn production, which we do here, which includes soaking the grain, cooking the grain. We'll then bag it in this mixer, and then it's ready to go into the auto plate with the green or The green mixer? Uh, just the red one. The green one's not in operation yet. We're fixing that one up. That's a, that's the one I got from the old uh, soil soil plant that, that they bag soil. Um, but yeah, that one will bag the substrate. This one bags the spawn. So this one here, this is uh, where we're mixing our, our substrate with our harder fuel pellets and soil from most of our species. Now, um, Sakaki, my Sakaki, other species like that are growing on different structures. They don't need that, that nutrition like the, um, yeah, they, yeah, more sawdust than less nutrition. You sell spawn also? Yeah, we sell spawn also. Yeah, we're not selling a ton of it right now because it's just, you know, our, our operation's just getting to the point where we can produce. Kind of using everything we're making. Yeah, we're usually using everything that we're making. <laughs> And you know, you always like to have a week's worth of backup just in case nothing goes wrong. So once the substrate is bagged here, we'll uh, take it and we'll put it on these carts. And from these carts, if you want to weasel out here, um, so the recipe that a lot of the industry uses is called Master's Mix, and it's one that's found quite commonly online. So, you know, it's kind of shared freely throughout the community. Um, 
and it's you know it's by far the best and highest yielding substrate for for oysters and lion's mane. But it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a little different for the commercial oyster we use. It's the big straw fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. This master mix is really common. It's perfect looking all these cat boxes. Is it 50-50? Yeah, it's 50-50. We actually now do 60-40 just because we found that we don't need that extra soy in there. Um, but yeah, wheat straw works great. It's just growing in these uh, micro bags that we grow in. It's really hard to get enough substrate into a bag to get a good deal. Yeah. 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 yeah, so with straw, I mean, it takes a lot of packing to get a 10-pound block, you know. But uh, yeah, so this is our... Um, Substrate sterilizer, so or it's actually atmosphere transportation, so it's not real true sterilization. So this gets up to 200 degrees for three hours. Uh, the internal temperature of the blocks we just pump steam into this, and uh, it can't so the internal which is 200. Yeah, 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 internal. We've actually been cutting that back even a little bit. Um, you know, the nice thing about working with auger is you can test everything on the auger. You have some. You know something to look at and say oh it's actually not growing microbes you know so based off of that it's it makes your process a little bit easier how do you get the steam into this so there's a little steam unit inside the door right here that pumps a little pipe we just got this is just a shipping container just a small shipping container yep it smells good. yeah it does <laughs> it smells sweet after they're cooked with the thing yeah. the, the holes and stuff right yeah, yeah, especially wheat bran smells like pancakes. It's yeah. so good, and that's what yeah. we'll use for shiitake and maitake is the wheat bran. Yeah, so pretty simple. I mean, you know. Howdy, Nick. Hello. <laughs> well, that was an easy way to get out. <laughs> He's leaving. <laughs> I'll let you guys go. No, you can push that. You can push them in, man. We're, we're on to the next here. So, yeah, after they hang out in here, I mean, then they come out, they cool. You guys come in here. So this is the substrate lab. So this is where we'll inoculate all of that substrate that was wheeled into the, uh, the pasteurizer out there. So we'll take the cards, roll them in here. And this is where we introduce spawn into them. So where Joshua will introduce spawn into them. <laughs> So yeah, what we're doing is we're taking these two bags and we're dumping it into this uh, little spawn that we have put here. So that just kind of, you know, measures out a certain quantity of spawn. Open the bag, put it under that, dump the spawn into it, and send it down to the field with the field and bag with the species. And then you shake it up in the bucket? Yeah, yeah. So the dryer is a big help. We haven't been using it lately, but when we do have it worked into the system, it uh, definitely alleviates some of the cables. Yeah, we've just found recently that tumbling them a little bit too much can actually get into the soil and create a little bit less of a spawn with all. Which we're trying to get every single thing to be grown in our soil. You know, we, want, we want those blocks to be 100% colonized by the time it's finished. So. But yeah, this is where actually the majority of the work happens. <laughs> Um, so a lot of our business right now is on the East Coast. Um, a lot of New York, a lot of, we, we actually have dealt with a couple of people in there. Um, Ohio, uh, lots of Tennessee, Nashville area. So mostly the East Coast. Once you get out to the Midwest, it gets a little finicky as far as like the East Coast, uh, you know, Colorado, things like that. They're just hard to reach with, uh, with the shipping flow if that makes sense for growers, you know. So that, that's been our biggest challenge, and as we get bigger, something that's been, you know, in the soon to be, you know, hopefully taken care of when we're shipping truckloads and able to access that site. So if a new builder or is looking for a substrate, they can go on the website and see what strange other builds are yeah, yeah. doing. Yeah, so there's a uh, commercial a commercial guide there on our website, and they can just fill out the form, and we'll reach out to them and send them our you know, all the species that we have, pricing, uh, logistics quotes, and stuff like that. 
Ganoderma. Yeah, we're doing Ganoderma. Um, just infrequently, we do a run every. Cordyceps. What you said? Not cordyceps yet. We we have all the stuff. We have cultures. We just you know have not taken the time to do it yet, but. Definitely something worthwhile for people to look into. They're they're definitely they bring a good dollar amount if you can find the right buyers for that. Uh, yeah. If you allow the before you ship out to someone, do you allow the full mycelium to develop? Yeah, so you can see these were just done last week. So these are just starting to take off. They have this little spec. Uh, this is mine. So yeah, in about two weeks they'll start looking a little bit more like these blocks over here. And this is what we're Ideally, looking for is something that's totally colonized, full of mycelium. You know, yeah, yeah, they're they're very aggressive, and that's why you know you cannot go wrong with the whiz. Yeah, so the blocks are usually sixty percent moisture. Yeah, sixty percent moisture. So um, I'll show you guys a cool little thing that we're working on for uh, producing substrate. It's great for new growers. Just it eliminates the mixer and all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you before, before you leave here. But yeah, after this, we pack them into boxes. After two weeks, we kind of just slowly comb through them, you know, because they, they're getting done at different times and all of the species just grow at different rates. And sometimes you have slow takeoffs on different spawn species and, you know, some spawn may not be made as nicely or something like that could really affect the time. The next thing we start doing, I, I think, is a great concept is you don't have to worry about the disease as much since it's still in the back. I mean, you can still have problems, but like you are when trying to grow them out. And that's, yeah, and we find that to be a huge issue in the grow room. I mean, there's, you know, we ran into very little disease in here, but the grow room, we have huge problems with fungal sacs around here. And it's just, you know, that's something that if growing mushrooms was our, our main thing, we'd be taking them. Yeah, so all the bags are labeled on the top here. So, yeah, so we coat them on top here. This one is uh, Snow Oyster. It was the spawn date was on date on 90, and then it was inoculated on June 1. So we keep track of the date of the spawn, how old, how long it takes for everything to grow, um, and that helps us keep blocks. As well, so. This one is snow oyster here, so you can see how this is much denser. Uh, yeah, so these blocks here are 10 pound blocks. Yes, and these will yield anywhere from two and a half to four pounds. Uh, this depends on, you know, really how you're doing it. Uh, a lot of commercial growers will not flush these blocks more than one. So you're going to, your first flush, you're going to get anywhere between two and a half and ten pounds. Your consecutive flushes, you're only looking at Mycelium weakens. Um, oh, really Once they receive this, then they're going to make slits in the bag. Yeah, yeah. So we'll show you the grow room here. 